Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. We're transitioning into a pattern where we can see afternoon and evening severe thunderstorms today and tomorrow. I'll walk you through the timeline for both days. And WRL is following breaking news unfolding this morning. Three people shot and sent to the hospital in Hope Mills. Join me in just a bit as we walk you through what investigators are sharing this morning. And polls open in half an hour for primary runoff elections in North Carolina. What you need to know about the races that will be decided today. The Carolina Hurricanes are keeping their season alive in dramatic fashion. Their big win in game five and a look ahead to game six back here at PNC Arena. The Canes digging deep, showing grit and determination, and definitely hope still mm -hmm, alive mm -hmm. in that series. Good morning, everyone. It is 6 o'clock. Great to have you with us. I'm viewing you through a new lens here. <laughs> I had to give the contacts a break, and so I'm wearing my glasses. I'm Renee Chu. I'm Jeff Hogan. <laughs> well, I thought I was seeing things this morning with that Cane score when right? I woke up. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> Went to bed, to it was one. one nothing. They were losing going to the third period. Thought that was it, but... Live to see another day here. Mm -hmm. And we have a little rain on the way, too. Elizabeth Gardner in the WRS Severe Weather Center with a look at that radar. Yeah, we do have some light patchy rain, especially from the Triangle area northward and eastward. Just a, about an hour or two ago, it was pretty widespread across the viewing area. And there's another band that's down into South Carolina that's going to come lifting across our region. So if it's not raining where you are right now, give it another 30 minutes to an hour, and most likely we'll see that. Later this afternoon, we'll transition to scattered storms, and our southern counties do have a level one risk for Severe weather, damaging wind would be the biggest threat. We take a look at future cast and you can see the scattered showers for us this morning. It's going to be light and patchy, but you know, sometimes it doesn't take a lot of rain to cause a real mess for their morning commute. So Ken standing by to tell you more about that. Around lunchtime, we begin to see thunderstorms popping up. So the rain may become heavier in some places and the winds will become gusty with those thunderstorms. And then we're going to repeat this again for tomorrow with another level one risk. Here's a look at downtown Durham. It is just damp out there. Temperatures are in the mid 60s and we'll see a cool afternoon with highs in the low 70s this afternoon. Coming up, we'll walk it through Wednesday and then also Friday and Saturday. We could see some storms as well. Ken? Elizabeth, at 601, we are checking road conditions this morning. This map shows the damp roads all over the triangle this morning. We just got reports of Raleigh police officers working a couple of crashes, one on Lewisburg Road and Valley Stream Drive and New Hope Road and New Bern Avenue, not causing any problems this morning for your morning commute as all. We want to give you an opportunity to see what's happening out on the roadways this morning. This is a live look at I-40 and Airport Boulevard. Traffic is picked up, uh, flowing nicely in both directions, but we'll keep you posted here in the WRL Traffic Center. And good morning. I'm Chris Levengood here in the WREL Live Center with that breaking story that we have been following since we learned about it about 20 minutes ago from Cumberland County Sheriff's deputies. We're being told that in Hope Mills off Dry Point Lane and Legion Road, three people were reported shot and then later sent to the hospital. I'm going to show you exactly where that is. I'm just going to circle here for reference. So you'll see there's Dry Point Lane right here and then Legion Road right here. It's mostly kind of an industrial area, it looks like, as I see a convenience store nearby and a tractor dealer and looks like Master Pro, Master Pro flooring, but it's unclear the circumstances that surround this shooting. That is what we're trying to learn this morning. Again, three people shot sent to the hospital. WRL is working to learn the extent of the injuries and what exactly led up to this shooting. Chris, thank you. This morning, polls open for runoff elections in several races across the state. Polling places will open their doors in less than 30 minutes. WRL's Laura Levine is live in Raleigh this morning. And Laura, there are three Republican races on the ballot today. Renee, good morning. We will see voters head to precincts like this one here at Chavis Park, heading this way to cast their ballot for today's primary runoff election, which features the statewide Republican races for state auditor and lieutenant governor. And that's because both positions attracted lots of candidates in the March GOP primary, and no one got above 30 percent of the vote. In the 13th Congressional District, which wraps around the Triangle area, voters will decide between Smithfield attorney Kelly Daughtry and former federal prosecutor Brad not. But Daughtry ended her campaign just days before this runoff, so her name will still appear on the ballot. Some voters may have trouble supplying a photo ID because of a processing backup at the DMV. State Elections Director Karen Brinson Bell says those voters will still be able to vote using a provisional ballot. There's actually an exception for that on the exception form, so we could um, help them that way, or potentially they may have another acceptable form of ID. 
And just a heads up for voters in Orange County, Jennifer Moore uh, withdrew her uh, her position from the Board of Education runoff there, but uh, her name will also still appear on the ballot because that was done even after the ballots were printed out. Laura Levine, WREL News. We are live in Raleigh. Polls will be open until 7.30 tonight. You can find your sample ballot and polling location, as well as information about each candidate on WRL.com. Search vote. We'll have results after the polls close tonight on WRL, WRL.com, and the WRL News app. A driver is still on the run this morning after leading troopers on a chase that ended in a four-car crash. New this morning, we are seeing another driver's dash cam video that shows this chase. Here's what you can see, a white Dodge Challenger ripping through this intersection here, a trooper close behind on his tail. More law enforcement vehicles then speed past as the chase continues. This happened last night in Spring Lake in Cumberland County, and troopers say the driver was going up to 150 miles per hour and then crashed into two other cars. Two people were taken to the hospital. We're working to find out their conditions. Troopers say that white Dodge Challenger was stolen. The driver was able to get away from that scene. The Canes are coming back to PNC Arena for another game. They are right back in the series with the New York Rangers after exploding for four goals in the third period of Game 5 last night. The Canes got a 4-1 to win and are now within three games to two in the best of seven series. Fans who are at Carolina Ale House for Game 5 say they are riding high. So one thing about this team, there's grit. You know, they never give up one play at a time, one goal at a time. That's all we can do is just go through and just get to the end. And that's what we did. The Canes will have a chance to tie up the series at three games apiece in game six, Thursday night in Raleigh. After that game, be sure to tune in to our exclusive post game show here on WREL. It will get started at 1125. Today, Michael Cohen will be on the stand again in former President Donald Trump's hush money trial. Trump's former lawyer and personal fixer started his testimony Monday. He told the jury Trump directed him to pay off Stormy Daniels in the days before the 2016 election. He said the payoff happened because Trump was furious. Daniels was trying to sell her story about having sex with him. Trump denies the encounter and the charges of disguising the payoff as legal expenses. A 14-year-old is recovering in the hospital after a shooting in Durham. This happened around 1130 yesterday morning on Wabash Street in the McDougal Terrace neighborhood. Sky 5 flew over the scene shortly after police responded. Police tell us the boy's injuries are not life-threatening. This is just the latest in a number of shootings in Durham in recent weeks, including one in which a 16-year-old boy was killed. Morrisville police say a man is facing charges after a domestic assault call. Police say a man and a woman got into a fight. This is video from the WRL breaking news tracker from the scene last night on Alamany Street. The man was arrested on three outstanding warrants. The woman was not hurt. Video from inside a Virginia pet store has led to criminal charges against a woman from Roxborough. Danville police say the video shows 22-year-old Cassidy Gill hitting dogs while she grooms them at a pet care business. The first few seconds shows her smacking a dog in the face while trying to trim its nails. Another portion of the video shows her hitting the dog on its backside. And you can hear her saying, I'm going to beat you. PETA shared this video online, which led to the charges. The organization says there are ways to protect your dog. If you have a mobile grooming uh, salon in your area, uh, have your dogs groomed at home. That's the, the place where they're safest and it's the place where they're most comfortable. The owner of the pet care business says he fired Gill after seeing the video. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Ukraine today. He plans to meet with President Volodymyr Zelensky to talk about U.S. aid and long-term security commitments. This is Blinken's fourth visit to Kyiv since Russia invaded two years ago. WRL Tower is lit up in dark blue this morning in honor of National Police Week. Some of our local police officers were here for a lighting ceremony last night. The tower lighting is one of many tributes to police officers happening across the area nationally for Police Week. Earlier Monday, people came together at Hayes Barton Baptist Church in Raleigh to honor officers who have lost their lives. That includes 23 fallen Wake County law enforcement officers. Chief Estella Patterson says the public is doing a lot to show their support. This is an incredible week. Just being able to celebrate our fallen officers, our heroes, and then also to celebrating our officers who are still standing. 
And it is all week. National Police Week will continue through Saturday. Smoke from Canadian wildfires is once again drifting into the U.S., where it is causing air quality issues this time. And Caitlin Clark suiting up for her first professional WNBA game tonight, and she is raising the bar before she even steps on the court. I'll tell you how next. And it's a messy morning out there. We take a live look at Dill Doppler 5000 radar. Some scattered showers now. It'll transition to thunderstorms later this afternoon. I'll show you who's most likely to see heavy rain. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Twelve gray skies, some scattered light rain. Later this afternoon, it'll pick up in intensity with some scattered thunderstorms. But it's just a little messy out there this morning. Temperatures are in the 60s. Uh, it's damp in places. Later this afternoon, uh, we do have that level one risk for severe storms. And uh, by the time we get to uh, at least uh, lunchtime into the middle of the afternoon, we'll start to see some of those storms cropping up. Damaging winds will be our biggest threat. Our rain chances today definitely go up right around lunchtime and continue on into the afternoon and evening. We may see some of those stronger thunderstorms right around or just after lunchtime today. Take a look at Apex. It's just damp out there right now. So nothing heavy to start with, but it just is a little inconvenient. Our temperatures are in the low to mid 60s heading out the door. Could be a bit warmer than yesterday and kids getting off the bus to the low 70s this afternoon. Elizabeth checking road conditions this morning. All this green shows the damp road conditions all across the triangle this morning. Uh, we just got reports of Raleigh police working a crash on Brentwood Road near Capitol Boulevard. Not any problems there should not affect your morning commute. I want to take you outside and show you what the conditions are like right now on the Beltline. This is a live look at I-440 and Lake Boone Trail. You can see the wet road conditions out there. Give yourself some extra time if you're getting ready to head out. There will be no charges for a Raleigh police officer who shot an armed man and hit a bystander in the process. This shooting happened in February on Rock Quarry Road. The Raleigh police officer shot the armed suspect and also a bystander who was in a nearby vehicle. Both men survived. Wake County's district attorney says the officer's use of force was justified. A search is underway for two people who led Wake County deputies on a chase in a stolen car. This caused Alston Ridge Elementary and Middle School to go into code yellow lockdown for about an hour yesterday. The sheriff's office said the driver wouldn't stop for deputies. A man who lives nearby said he had never seen anything like this before. He was immediately on those brakes and then once he stopped, uh, I watched like one guy immediately bolt right out and then the other one's like fixing himself a little bit and then he tops right out. The sheriff's office is asking anyone with information to give them a call. A huge night for a rising star. Caitlin Clark will make her WNBA debut tonight and getting into that arena to see her play has become notably more difficult. WRL's Michelle McConaughey is here with all the excitement surrounding tonight's sold out game. Yeah, Jeff, everybody wants to see Caitlin Clark play. The game is sold out. The Connecticut Sun announced yesterday that her home opener against the Indiana Fever is a sellout. It's the first time the team has done that since 2003, and it's largely due to fans who want to see Clark play. Playing in front of a sold-out crowd is nothing new to her, but tonight's different. It's the start of her professional career, and she spoke about what it means to her. This is a dream. This is something I wrote down on a piece of paper when I was in like second grade, like get a basketball scholarship, play in the WNBA. She is. There's so much interest surrounding Clark. Some opponents are actually having to move games to larger venues to accommodate those ticket sales because everybody just wants to see Clark play. Uh, the game tonight tips off at 8 o'clock, and you can tune in to today for more on her highly anticipated debut. But she's popular, Jeff. A lot of people want to see her. Well, and basketball in Connecticut. I mean, University of Connecticut with a storied women's program. There are huge fans in Connecticut, so you can yeah. understand why this is sold out, certainly. And uh, well, I'll be tuned. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Two North Carolina natives are hoping to stay in the competition for next week's season finale of The Voice. Josh Sanders of Kannapolis giving it his all in last night's live semifinals. Tay Lewis of Goldsboro also took the stage singing Amazed by Lone Star.
Viewers voted to decide the five singers who will move on to next week's season finale. And those results will be announced tonight. You can watch The Voice right here on WRL tonight at 8. Smoke from Canadian wildfires is prompting health warnings for the second year in a row in the Midwest. Air quality alerts were issued for parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin Monday. And fire crews are battling several raging wildfires in British Columbia and Alberta. So far, more than 24,000 acres have burned. Check out this lightning strike caught on camera in Texas. The tower cam at NBC's affiliate in Houston caught the lightning bolt and the power surges that happened after it struck. The storm was part of a bigger cluster of severe weather that brought hail and damaging winds to the Houston area on Monday. It is 617 now and we haven't seen any lightning strikes, but we could later. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner in the WRO Severe Weather Center. What we are seeing right now, light patchy rain. Yes, and that's out ahead of that system that brought all that thunder and lightning and a lot of severe weather to the Gulf Coast yesterday. That is still ongoing and all of that will start to slide toward us. We do have uh, just a small chance for severe storms for today and it goes up a little bit, at least in terms of the coverage across our area by tomorrow. Then Friday and Saturday, a separate system comes in to bring us some scattered showers and thunderstorms. And of course, that could affect your weekend plans. We take a look at what's happening right now. Just some scattered light rain, nothing heavy, but sometimes it doesn't take a whole lot of rain to start some action. And once that gets going, it can be a mess. So Ken Smith's coming up in just a few minutes to uh, take a closer look at that. In the meantime, we'll zoom in. A little bit of light rain there in Durham right now. Rollsville, Zebulon, uh, Clayton up toward uh, Rocky Mount and Wilson. It has tapered off a little bit down into the Sand Hills just recently. Um, we'll take a look at the big picture down here. Of course, we still have this ongoing severe weather along the Gulf Coast. This time closer to Florida, a severe, th a severe thunderstorm warning and a tornado watch there, which is that red shaded area. Cold front will sweep through tomorrow. So we we still have a good ways to go before we're finished with this round of severe storms. And then we have the potential for more thunderstorms possibly over the weekend. Our severe weather threat today is in our southern county. So parts of Sampson and Cumberland, all of Hoke and part of Moore County in that level one risk. Damaging winds would be our biggest threat tomorrow. As I mentioned, it covers uh, the entire viewing area, almost the whole state actually, but it's a level one risk. And that just means some isolated potential for some wind damage. Here's a look at future cast kicking things off this morning with some light patchy rain. Notice it just continues. We'll have a chance of scattered thunderstorms for this afternoon and that rain likely continues overnight on and off. And then of course, Wednesday, the same story. Look at that 6 a.m. There we are with the rain again and then potentially a little bit of a break for parts of the morning, but definitely during the afternoon when the cold front comes through, that's going to spawn some scattered thunderstorms. That's likely to be late afternoon and into the evening. And that's when we'd have the best chance of severe storms. You take a look at that and as we get into the afternoon, uh, definitely that potential potential for uh, storms goes up. And so that's the timeline that we'll be watching for for Wednesday. Right now, it's just damp out there. We have damp conditions in Goldsboro and in Apex. Chapel Hill, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant. And of course, there's our newsroom in Fayetteville. We check out Friday. The latest run of the computer model with Friday is dry for much of the day, but scattered storms develop during the evening. And Saturday is looking a little wetter at 40%, 100% today, and 60% for tomorrow. Looking for as much as uh, an inch and a half of rain between now and Saturday. We definitely need the rain. It's a cool afternoon for us at 72 and then highs are in the 80s and coming up we're going to take a little closer look at some of those temperatures headed our way this weekend. All right at 620 Elizabeth we're checking road conditions. All the green you see right here that shows all the damp roads that's happening right now uh, all across the triangle and surrounding communities. We're here to keep you posted exactly what's going on. I want to take you outside and show you exactly what some of those road conditions look like this morning. This is our camera at I-40 and Lake Wheeler Road. The west Bound traffic going away from us this morning. You can see traffic is picking up quite a bit out there. I want to go ahead and give an opportunity to check our sensors. We just got reports of this crash that happened on Capitol Boulevard. Uh, we're told that it's a serious crash this morning right there at Brentwood Road. At this point, when our sensors are not picking up any delays, but definitely uh, if you're heading out this morning, we want you to give yourself some extra time. Thanks for that, Ken. A terrifying situation here for a blind woman who got into an Uber in Raleigh. Why she says the driver left her alone a mile away from her intended destination. Local Red Lobster restaurants suddenly closed for business. They're among dozens of restaurants nationwide that suddenly shut their doors. And here you're winning NC Education Lottery numbers on your screen right now.
This What's Trending report, sponsored by Rug and Hog. Tom Brady is headed to the broadcast booth, and we now know what his first game will be. Ken Smith here now with What's Trending. Yeah, the GOAT donning a new hat. Fox says Tom Brady will be part of the announcing team for the season opening game between the Dallas Cowboys and the Cleveland Browns. Fox signed Brady to a 10-year, $375 million deal to be the network's lead analyst. It's a nice sum of money to not get hit on Sundays, you know. He'll be, uh, he'll be on the call. And P.S., uh, that game on Fox, uh, Cowboys and Browns, uh, that's on Fox 50, first game of the season. Looking forward Good to that stuff, as yeah. well. So nice. listen, Ellen DeGeneres says she will talk about it in an upcoming Netflix special. By it, she presumably means the accusations of a toxic work environment on her daytime talk show that aired its last episode back in 2022. The special will come out later this year, and she says it will be her last one. And on Instagram, she says, yes, I'm going to talk about it. Yes, this is my last special. And yes, Portia really is that pretty in real life. <laughs> uh, but this special comes five years after her first Netflix special. Um, back then when the accusations came mm. out in previous interviews, she was uh, devastated by the accusations um, and had to end her season of Ellen there. But it'll be interesting to see what yeah. she has to say about yeah. it. Saying that it's her last, calling her mm -hmm. shot and... That's going to be the end of it. Clear the air. She's dropping the mic. Yeah, that's it. Ken, thank you. George Clooney will make his Broadway debut next year. He'll play newscaster Edward R. Murrow in a stage production of his movie, Good Night and Good Luck. Clooney got an Oscar nomination for Best Director for that movie in 2006. The first sea turtle nest of the season at Cape Hatteras National Seashore has been found. The loggerhead nest was found near Frisco Saturday by park biologists. A resource protection area was set up around that nest. You can even see the tracks from the turtle coming up on shore there Aww. to lay her eggs and then before heading back to the ocean. Last year was the seashore's second highest recorded nesting year with 380 total nests. <laughs> It could take your teen up to five months to get enrolled in driver's ed in Wake County. Coming up, how Wake school leaders are working today to change that. And we're dealing with light patchy rain out there this morning. I'll show you when it starts to become more intense and turn to thunderstorms later today. I'll walk you through the timeline. Also, polls will be open in three minutes for today's primary runoff elections. What you need to know before you head off to your polling place today.